Um, consistency in the off season, you know, dedicating and um, you know coming up with goals as to you know where you want this team to be, and then leaders stepping up in roles, um, you know, pulling guys along, young guys, guys who can help us, and then you know the coaches have done a great job with us schematically, you know, helping us become a better team. And, um, you know, just not even the on-field stuff, you know, like the stuff we do in the weight room, um, the stuff we do in the film room, just all of that type of stuff has allowed us to, you know, become a, a better complete team. Defensively, what are, what are the biggest challenges that Alabama poses to you? They have a lot of offensive weapons, receivers, quarterbacks really good, um, running back is good. So, you know, they're a, com they're a complete offense, but, you know, we also are the uh, number one defense in the country. So we propose many challenges for them as well. So it's going to be a great matchup. Um, not from my standpoint, no, but, you know, SEC, Big Ten, it's like, it doesn't matter what conference you're in, and football is football at the end of the day. So how much of your offensive is your past as an offensive player? How does that shape your instincts as a in a, in a In a way, it allows me to not guess, but um, anticipate, as well as knowing my scheme, um, knowing, you know, what our play calls are, and then down the distance, knowing like, okay, offense might run this type of concept on, you know, third and long compared to third and short. Knowing that what, you know, our offense did when I was a part of the offense. Different things like that do help me in a sense. I feel like almost you can read the receiver's body language at times. Like, okay, this is what I would have done, and this is what they might do a certain cut or a certain move. When I play receiver, I kind of try making everything looking the same. Um, I didn't want to give, you know, DBs an a easy tell on when I was either um, run blocking or running a route, as well as I'll make my body lean look the same, so I wasn't giving away any hints on if I'm out of breakdown or anything like that. But, you know, watching the film, you definitely can tell uh, between certain receivers when they're getting the ball, when a play, a play is designed for them and when it's not. Having done both sides, how impressive is it that Jermaine Burton's averaging over 28 catch? Um, that's that's really good for him. He's a good receiver, explosive receiver. Um, you know, even when he was at Georgia, he was doing those type of things. Um, and you know, the, the the scheme that they have allows him to be very successful. And he makes plays himself as well. So you know, it's, it's good for him. How do you compare Ohio State's receivers to Bama's? Are there similarities? I think Bama has a lot more speed than Ohio State's receivers did. Um, but you know, we played. They're both two talented receiver groups. So. You know, I feel like we had some preparation by playing Ohio State receivers, which has, you know, led us up to this point here. How many times have you gone back and watched the OSU game? Have you done any of that or is it all over the head? Uh, you know, we definitely go back and watch where teams have beat us. Mm -hmm. um, not just the Ohio State game, every game that we play, we watch, you know, where, where do teams attack us the most, what coverages, what concepts hurt us the most, and we just go back and look at all of it and then we put it together to see, you know, what's going to help us the most this game. That's good for them. Let them, you know, take who they want. We care about ourselves. Um, and again, we're just going out there to prove ourselves right. Just talking to Samaj, he said that you really brought him along. You talk about how he's developed. He said you were the one that was sticking with him the most. And he really had to study you. Can you just talk about his growth a little bit? Uh, every day he's becoming more mature as a person, not even just a football player. Um, you know, I've known Samaj since my freshman year. Um, when he was in high school, I think he might have been in eighth grade when I met him. Um, but you know, Samaj, he's going to be a very good player, and the, you know, to see what he's helped this team do this year, to see how you know he's played a big role, big key factor on this team, it's you know very good to see as a leader. Um, and, you know, he's going to be a name that's going to be remembered in this program. Um, I don't really, I don't know, I don't think about how we prepared last year. I just know the way we've been preparing this year has been really good. Um, is there much of a difference in terms of the physicality of practice or you know, how you guys are studying compared to you know, those games against TCU and Georgia? I feel like this year we've been able to 
stay locked in for longer periods of times um, because of the schedule coach, you know, put out for us. Um, and then, you know, when we have full goal practices, it is very intense. It's physical. It's fast. It's like, a, you know, a true NFL practice, how we've been practicing. Um, but, you know, everything that coach has set out for us, you know, the way he made our schedule has allowed us to prepare very well. And has it been a big difference for you in particular not being able to kind of study at home no, nah, I mean, we, we go to the, the team room and watch film. You know, we get the guys together. Um, but, yeah, no, I've been able to study as much as I wanted to. How would you describe the 24 hours around the Penn State game, finding out that Coach Harbaugh was suspended and then the way that game played out? It was, you know, it was unfortunate. We were kind of disappointed the way we found it out. Um, the way we found out, excuse me. Um, but... You know, we handled it very well. You know, coach was like, "This is what they're doing. This is the case. We're gonna, we're gonna try fighting it. If I lose, I lose. If I win, I win." But regardless, we knew we had to go out there and step on that field on Saturday, and um, it just gave us another chip on our shoulder, an even bigger chip on our shoulder. And so, you know, we did what we had to do on that Saturday. Did it show you something about the team that maybe you didn't know, or did it reinforce what you already felt about the team? It definitely reinforced. What, you know, how we felt about this group of guys. Um, you know, not really worried about what anybody else thinks. Um, you know, no matter what you try doing to us, no matter what you try saying to us, it's not, you know, we're not going to let it affect us and what our goal is, and we're not going to let it derail us. How would you describe the way Coach Harbaugh like, utilized the kind of diversity, if you will, to kind of get you guys motivated in the rest of I think. You know, as a, as a team, um, we all let it motivate us. You know, it wasn't just one person that was motivated. It really just, it just adds to the story of what we're trying to accomplish. In general, do you feel like he kind of relishes that position of like, having a, you know, uh, not a target, per se, but sort of like that mentality of like, all right, we got to bond together because of everything else going around us? Yeah, definitely. You heard him say, you know, the, the bet. He made it an acronym himself, you know, bring everybody together. Um, and I think, you know, that's exactly what's been going on this year with everything that's been happening. Um, the team just every single day, every single week has just continues to get closer. Um, and, you know, that starts in the off season. That starts with the relationships that we build with each other through training, through film study, through practice, through everything that we go through in the off season. Okay, I know there's like three or four team buses. Were you on the bus when he's saying crack the Edmund Fitzgerald? No. The no. That's the offensive bus. Okay. What did you guys, what was the defensive reaction when you guys found out, like, he's breaking out karaoke, coming back from Sparty? Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't even know that, actually. Um, we did hear that they were singing different songs on that bus, but, um, yeah, I didn't know he did that. Thanks, Mike. Much appreciated. Mikey, as you look back on your career, you've been here for so long, what are your emotions going into? I'm just taking it one game at a time, um, not looking ahead. You know, what happened in the past happened in the past. Um, and I'm, you know, blessed to be in this position I'm in right now. In a game like this, when the margins are so small, turnovers can be the difference in your game. We've had multiple interceptions this year. What goes into that? Is there a randomness to it, or is there a playmaking aspect to it? Like, what? Um, you know, taking care of your main responsibility, being in the spots that you're supposed to be in, executing the game plan, um, not trying to do anybody else's job, you know, doing your 111th of, you know, the defense and just, you know, making the plays that come to you. Um, I'm super confident in, you know, our front seven. You know, we have a stout D-line. We have a great linebacker room. We have great DB, so like I said, if everyone just does their job, um, you know, we know that they're going to make plays, but you know, we're going to make plays as well. So it's going to come down to who's going to make the most plays when the, those plays are needed, who's going to be the most fundamentally sound, most technically sound um, group on the field that day. What stands out when you see uh, how many receivers on film uh, some of those matchups? Speed. Um, you know, they have guys who can track the ball very well down the field. But, you know, I feel like every single week we've been, you know, prepared through the preparation of our own receivers in practice, 
um, and then you know who we face every week. Um, some teams might not have the same caliber receivers, but you know some people do different things that you know have challenged us along the way. So I definitely feel that we've been prepared for this moment. Charles Wilson had a pretty famous interception in 1997 this game. Have you thought about like what uh, that kind of play for yourself in this game would be like right now? Like I definitely you know visualize myself making plays. Um, so you know I'm just. I'm not going out there, you know, Monday looking to do too much, do too extra. I'm going to be who I've been. I'm going to, you know, lead how I've led. Um, and, you know, I'm going to play how I've played, and, you know, I'm going to make the plays that come my way. Yeah, yo. Um, can I ask you a few questions, sir? What's that word? So, what, I'm going to start off with, what's your name? I know everybody knows your name, but I really don't know your name. What's your name? Fred Moore. Okay. Each other, each other. <laughs> but on the team, who would you not let your daughter? I mean, who would you let date your daughter? Who would I let? Yeah, who would you let? Nobody. Bro, out of one person, just pick one person. Nobody. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got the name for your daughter yet? No, not yet. Not yet. What you, what you got in mind? Um... Ezra, Summer, those are those are those are our top two right now. Top two. I want to hold up your time, but it might be Sanders still. Have a nice day. Appreciate you, Fred Moore. Massachusetts. No, you are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 19, bro, the 5, the sub zero. Uh huh. You know? But my biggest thing is who is your favorite player or why? I guess NFL, college, whoever. Like, whose game do you make yourself after? Um, when I used to play offense, my favorite player was Tavon Austin. Okay. Um, defensively, right now, I don't know. I don't think I have a favorite player on defense. I model my game for sure after guys like Mike Hitlin, uh Kenny Moore. Those two guys, I, you know, I look at and watch a lot. My biggest inspiration? No, my inspiration, I would say uh, my parents, man, you know, the to see what they've came uh, overcame in their lifetimes, uh, to see the life, or to see what they've been able to do, how they've been able to provide for you know my family, um, you know the adversity that they fought coming from Haiti, you know being two immigrants, uh, being uh, growing up in America, and then trying to raise you know kids in you know this society, a completely different culture, um, you know a country that you know lives by a completely different motto, is what inspires me. Um, 
you know, it pushes me and drives me every single day to be able to, you know, wake up and say, you know, my parents are still here. They do whatever it takes to provide for this family. Um, the only way I can pay them back is with my own success. So, you know, that's that's my inspiration. I would say. But mind you, like, you know, even my first year, your sophomore year, you know, yeah. we're two and four, and now we're coming up and coming up, you know, but like, and all that, what's been your biggest obstacle? I would say that COVID year, the COVID year and the following year, um, just because, you know, I was playing receiver, and I, I felt, you know, I wasn't really getting the looks that I, I wanted, or, you know, I, I felt like, you know, I wasn't getting targeted as much and stuff, so I was just like, you know what? I can only control what I can control. I never really, I've always, you know, I'm always been a mentally tough type of person, so I never really let it affect me too much. But, you know, that would, that would, I would say that would uh, have been the first time that I was, you know, really in my head about, you know, am I the guy? Um, am I who I say I am? But all I could do is, you know, control what I can control, and that's practice hard. That's show up every day, be who I am. Um, and then, you know, the following year after 21, I got moved to DB. And then my career has catapulted from there. And, you know, that's a big shout-out to Coach Harbaugh. I guess my last thing is, bro, like, what advice you got for the young dudes out there, man? Like, you know, my baby brother looks up to you. You know, he, he calls you family. You know, you've been to the crib and everything. But, like, my little cousins know who you are. You mm -hmm. know, it's kids in America know who you are. Like, what's your biggest advice to them? Consistency. Um, and, if, you know, if you're really going to do something, you got to do it. Don't just do it because someone else told you to do it. Um, you know, People could sit there and tell you, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that. But if you don't want to do it yourself, then it's never going to work out the way it should. Um, you know, you have to be willing, you have to be able. And a lot of people are able, but it's, it's the amount of will they have in them that's, you know, going to drive them and push them to get to the point of success that they want to be. So, you know, if you're not being consistent in it is that you're doing, um, you know, plans, not gonna, plans will fall through and, you know, they're not going to go the way you want them to. You know that. That's all I got, bro. <laughs> Love, fam. Do you want to see him first? No, it's, okay. just, just throw him at me. How long do your New Year's resolutions last? My New Year's resolutions? I don't, I don't think I've made New Year's resolutions for the past, like, four years. What's one rule from another sport you would add to football? Um. If you can't think of anything, that's Maybe uh, slide tackling from soccer. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> who's your top artist this year on Spotify or Apple Music? Probably Kodak. Right. What's one alum from Michigan you'd like to hang out with? One alum. Um. Can I give you three or four? Michael Phelps, Tom, Dez, and Charles. If you were planning a theme for a bowl game, like the Pop-Tart Bowl was super popular, what would you pick? It could be anything like... Yeah. Um, the I'll, the better. The, uh... Oh man, the um, the shampoo bowl, shampoo bowl. Just have you know after the game, whatever team wins, have shampoo poured all over the coach, something like that. Great, and then give us your best impression of one of your coaches. You know I can't do that. You know why? Because our coaches don't like us impersonating them, so I'm not gonna do it. Okay. No problem. Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. Yo. Mikey. Nice to meet you. Brandon Hillman, uh, DB from Michigan. Uh, what about you? Mikey Sarah still DB from Michigan. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, is there any pet peeves, like pre-game pet peeves that you have to do? A pre-game pet peeve? Did I say it right? You mean pre-game like routine? Pre-game routine. Good. You see, that's why I like you. <laughs> you feel me? Uh, my pregame routine, I definitely, like, it's mandatory that I don't tape at the facility. I okay. tape the first thing I get into the stadium. That's okay. I, I have to do that every time. Okay, okay. Um, next question. 
Is there any song that gets you in the right mind space to go out there and do what you do? Or is it just all, let's go do it? Any gospel music. Any so, gospel. yeah, like, I'll wake up, gospel music first thing in the morning. And then throughout, you know, throughout before game time, um, the warm-ups. You know, warm-ups I have you know, a little rap music on there. And then right before game time, you know, when we come back into the locker room, I'm back to gospel. Um, you know, kind of calm my mood down a little bit, you know, get me settled. Thank you, Mikey. I'll definitely be back with more questions. Appreciate you, you Brandon Hill. No, not not to me at least, because you know football is football. At the end of the day, it's the same thing. Like you know, when you're getting recruited out of high school, like you know, kids, people will tell you, you know, you're from the north. They don't play football up north. Or like me, I'm from Massachusetts. They don't play football in Massachusetts. Um, and to me, that doesn't matter. You know, if you know how to play football, you know how to play football. It doesn't matter where you come from. Um, yeah, they might say speed is different, physicality is different, size is different. But at the end of the day, it's the you know, as cliche as it sounds, it's the the fight's gonna be won by the dog that's hungrier, um, and you know that's all this game's gonna take. The team that's more physical, the team that executes the most, the team that makes the most plays when those plays are needed to be made. That's the team that's gonna win. I know we match that. I don't think we match that. I definitely know that. You know, I, I know what this team. Well, I know what our team. Um, I know who we are. I know how physical we are. I've seen it um, every single day. I know how fast we can play. I've seen that every single day. And I know how well we can execute our game plan. Um, and, you know, it's going to come down to the team that limits the mistakes. You know, the margin of error is much smaller in these playoff games. So the team that makes the most, that makes the most mistakes probably will be the team that, you know, ends up winning. Um, the team that executes the most is probably going to be the team that does win. So when you went to bed the night after, No, I didn't. I didn't think about it at all. I knew we had the selection the next morning, but that's that's the furthest I thought about it. When you saw this band, were you surprised? Um, no, I, I mean I was, I wasn't surprised. I wasn't sh like it was. It, it it is what it is. Like you know, you saw it. and I was like, yeah, that's who we're playing. I was like, let's go. That was my instant reaction. Was let's go. Yeah. What did you, what did you think about? Um, I don't remember what was on the email, but it was almost kind of like a. I'm pretty sure it was an email, pretty much, you know, if I was to sum it up, saying like, here's the things that we need to do to, not rebuild, but like, you know, reshift our focus in a sense. Were you inspired by it? Yeah, I, I'm inspired by you know 99% of everything Coach Harbaugh says. Uh, he's a very wise man, intelligent man. Um, and he's never said anything to me that hasn't, you know, been in my best interest. So, you know, when he speaks, I listen. What do you think of his speeches? I know sometimes he'll send those to and have to give some. That's, I think Coach Harbaugh could be a writer or a poet or, you know, anything of that sort. Because, like I said, you know, he's very good with his words. Um, some speeches are different than others. But, uh, you know, like, I, like when he speaks, when he's saying something, this is very powerful, very meaningful. Um, you know, very deep when he talks. What about you? Um, you're a musician, is that right? Used to be. Used to be. You don't, you don't play anymore? No, no. Okay. Um, you're working to get back to it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I haven't really thought about it too much. You've got other things on a plate. Yes. What part of Boston? Boston. Uh, Everett. Everett? Yeah. So, Michigan, who else for, for a new, decided to go to college for anybody? 
Um, I was committed to Virginia Tech before Michigan. I flipped from Virginia Tech, um, but I had other schools like you know Ole Miss, uh, Southern Mississippi, um, Rutgers, Boston College, Indiana, Wisconsin. Um, Were they all recruiting like as a receiver or a two-way player? Yeah, two-way player. Did you go to college wanting to play offense, or just did you really care? When I got here, I asked uh, Coach Harbaugh said. Um, you know, you have the, the choice to play offense or defense. I chose offense, um, you know, and I that was that's what I wanted to do was play offense. And then, you know, I would joke around about playing defense from time to time. Didn't really think it was ever going to happen until the end of 2021 when Coach called me and said, you know, I want you to play defense. Yeah. Yeah, we're, this is a team that plays for each other, a team that loves each other, respects each other. Um, you know, we're all, it's a, it's, a, it's a true brotherhood on this football team, and, you know, that's what I like about the most about this group of guys. You know, Coach, uh, outside the locker room, I'm sure you hear all, there, you hear all the stuff about how odd he is, how weird. What version of you, do you guys see? Like, some of your teammates were saying yesterday, yeah, he's a little odd, but he's sort of our oddball. We get him. For you guys as players, when you see some of the funny stuff he said, crazy things, is it just sort of, is that him, the media's portrayal, fans' portrayal, or is it also like that inside the locker room? Um, you know, who you see right here doing interviews is who you'll see in the locker room. Um, you know, that's how Coach Harbaugh is. That's who he is. That's who he's been since I've met him. And, you know, that's what I love and respect the most about him. He's going to be who he is no matter what. Trevor was saying yesterday he loves his anecdotes. How he'll, do, he'll come up with comparisons or anecdotes. He said, we're always waiting to team meetings to sort of the next one. Yeah, he does, he has a, a bunch of good things that he says, um, and at first it makes you think about it, but then it's like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. How do you think he's come through everything this year? Everything he's been throwing How have you seen him come through? He calls himself a steel wall. He calls himself a steel wall. Yep. Meaning that everything bounces off. Yep. As players, have you seen that one? Have you ever seen? Have you seen it all this year? One track mind is what he says. Um, you know, he knows what the coach knows what the focus is, and um, it's been that way since you know we found out that he wasn't coaching against Eastern uh, ECU. So since then, it's you know been the same exact way. How is that translated to you guys as players? Does it, does it filter down to you guys and the football team? Right? Yes. You know, we, we don't care about outside voices, outside noise. We just focus on ourselves and uh, do do what we can to do to make sure we're successful. When you look at, I know you watch a lot of tape with guys. When you look at Milrow and his maturation this year, what sort of has jumped out to you about what he's doing now that's been so successful as opposed to maybe what he was doing earlier this year? Uh, I think he has a lot, you know, more poise. Um, you know, being able to stand there, stay in that pocket, make the good throws, make the, you know, downfield throws, um, you know, take hits and just he seems like a true leader. Um, and I think, you know, the guys around him, you respect him, believe in what he says. Um, and, you know, that's somebody you want to play for, play with. Um, he looks like a good teammate to me. Um, and, you know, his athleticism, all of that, you know, jumps out on tape. Um, I think he's overall a really good player. So, you know, this is going to be a great matchup for us. His ability to run and extend the play, is that sort of the thing that is most dangerous about him? Because if you keep, obviously you got to pretend he's not letting it loose. Is that sort of one of the things about him? If you're going to sort of keep him under wraps, you got to do it. Yeah. Just sort of not let him get out and make the play. Yep. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Good luck to you, right? Thank you. Like, uh, for you as a defensive back, obviously, you know, you're not directly chasing around Jalen Moro, but when he does take off, uh, what is that like for you trying on the back end of the defense? Just tackling him like a running back. Um, you know, he can run the ball very well. He's good in space. He's, you know, a bigger bigger quarterback. Um, but, you know, you just got to be physical with him. Um, like I said, just tackling him like a running back. Oh, and uh, Alex in practice giving you the look for him. How's Alex been and going up against him in practice? 
they're probably, you know, if, if I didn't know their names and I watched both of them play football on, you know, on tape, I would say those guys are probably twins. So it's been a perfect look for us. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Mikey, you've been around the ball a lot this year, making a lot of big plays for the defense, for a lot of turnovers. Can you kind of describe the sense that you might have to be in those spots or just take me through uh, how you're able to make so many big plays for the defense? Just doing my part, um, you know, doing my part of the play call, doing my part of the game plan. Um, because I know that the other 10 guys around me are doing their, their part, their responsibility. So if I'm doing mine, then someone's going to make a play. If all 11 guys are playing as one, players are going to be made. Do you think that transitioning from being a receiver to a corner has helped in any sense in terms of like reading fumbles, interceptions, potentially? Uh, I'll just say it, uh, it helps me anticipate. Um, but, you know, what also comes with anticipating is knowing your game plan um, and then, you know, film study, knowing that, knowing tendencies and then just, uh, you know, studying the receivers, you know, knowing what they like to do, knowing where they're uncomfortable. Um, I'll, I'll, there's a whole bunch of different things that go into, you know, being able to make those plays and, you know, figuring out other, other receivers and, you know, figuring out what the offense does. It's, it's all it all depends on you know the, the team's mindset if you let yourself fall victim to the game is in a month then you know you'll fall victim to it but if you you know keep your mind focused on you know we have to prepare um, you know we have to stay locked in stay focused then that's what you're gonna do there is a balance between over preparation and under preparation um, and I just feel like you know coach Harbaugh has done a great job of helping us you know have that in between That, you know, when we have our walkthroughs, be 100%, you know, attentive to the walkthroughs. When we have practice, be 100% attentive to practice. Um, and just take advantage of every opportunity we have in preparation. Thank you. D-Wall. D-Wall. So, where everybody out there. So, coming from high school, uh, as a three-star recruit, I've been highly recruited. And right now, we're playing the biggest stage. Star don't matter. A star don't make you who you are. You were who you were before the star was even put on your name. Um, just, you know, ball how you ball. Stay consistent. Stay locked in. Work hard every day because that's what's going to pay off for you in the long run. You know that. Um, I, I knew I knew that about Coach Moore before that even happened. I think I, I'm pretty sure I came in the same year or a year after Coach Moore got in. So, like I knew who I knew who he was, you know, before he had to step up and be a head coach. Is he calm and steady at times, and then you know at times he's you know very fired up. Um, he brings the juice. You know, he's probably the juice man around the building. He he walks around with a yardstick. Um, you know, he slams it on the boards. But uh, you know, he's the juice guy around the building. Mike, you're also known as Sub Zero. Where did that come from? Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson. Quentin Johnson. Who's Quentin Johnson? Number twenty-eight. He came up with Sub Zero. Quentin Johnson. Does he get part of the trademark deal or something? Quinn Johnson. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you were saying supplies the juice, the yard stick, what are you talking about there? Coach Moore. Coach Moore, okay, gotcha. You guys have been talking about kind of the quirky style of Warhol and the weird things he says and does and kind of telling stories. Do you have a favorite um, quirky Jim Harbaugh style? No, I don't think I got a favorite. It's, yeah, I don't have a favorite. What about just his personality? 
I say I love it. Um, he's a great coach to play for. He's a coach that loves his players. You know, we love him. Um, you know, is I would there's nothing I wouldn't do for Coach Harbaugh if he asked me to do it. Um, and you know, when he does ask me to do it, I'm gonna do it 100 percent because I know he will do the same in return. That would be awesome to, you know, be, even be able to say, like, in 30 years, like, I played with that guy. Um, and, you know, it's, it's an honor to say right now. It's a blessing to say right now, like, that's my teammate. Um, and I hope he does do it. I'm rooting for him. Yeah. What does he do? Um, it's not really what he does or, um, or you know, like, it's, it's more so he uh, he allows us or he puts us, he doesn't put us, I wouldn't say he puts us through things, but it's more about, you know, telling us, like, you can't control a lot of, you can't control weather, you can't control, um, you know, schedule changes. You know, like, there's a whole bunch of things that you can't do, but what you can do is show up, um, do what's being asked of you to be done, get it done at a very high level, um, and, you know, control the circumstances that you can control. And it's, like, don't fall victim to the why me or, you know, the, the things that allow you to, you know, have a setback. You know, if you don't fall victim to those things, then you will be successful. It seems like that was a Yep. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. How, how, did you, how did you feel about this season in terms of like, in terms of like you know, the, the suspension and everything? Because everything went so well on paper, but there were so many challenges to get there. It was so hard to get there. How proud are you of this team and the way it did this? Um, I'm super proud of you know, every, everybody on this team, from the staff to the uh, you know, players. And um, you know, I think the most important thing during those times was the leadership. Um, and everybody led, you know, we have a, a whole bunch of leaders from six years, fifth years, um, senior class, junior class, you know, coach said it himself, like, there's no, for the past two years, we had a leadership council, we didn't do one this year because coach felt that there was, this was a team full of 100 leaders. Um, and I think, you know, during the times when coach was out, the best thing for us was to, you know, the whole group come together, which is exactly what we did. To be this close to your dream, one game will be a one game away from playing for the championship. How, how is it? How is it difficult to like to, to not think too far ahead and and, and, uh, and not think about your ultimate goal? Does the fact that it's Alabama make it make it a lot easier to concentrate on this game? Um, I don't think it's very difficult at all. It's just you know, our focus right now is on the semifinal playoff game. It's not the national championship. Like we know that it's right there, um, and that's the, it, it's the same thing as you know early in the season is. It's game two, it's week two, but we know that we still have to play Ohio State in November. It's, you know, it's just focusing on who you have that week, um, staying locked in on that opponent. I'm good, you? Who's the most famous person or alumni that's reached out to the FAS Nation playoffs? Probably Desmond Howard. What do you, what do you say? What was his message to you? Uh, he didn't reach out to me. We actually had an interview with him. Okay. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't pay attention to the transfer photo. I'm not sure. So this is the, the last last year of the four team playoffs. What's your favorite memory or favorite game that has come from the playoff game that you played? Yeah, one. Like that I've played in? No, no, just no, that you've watched. Watched from. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have one. A favorite. Do you? Coming up to cut off immediately if you want to get to this level. I mean, you're about 
play in road time as a road boy. What's that one distraction you would cut off from your experience for that like high school player right now trying to be in your position? And I ask you because obviously you're here now, mm -hmm. you're one of you, what you've experienced, what's that one thing that you have to look at? I'm gonna get to this next one. Um I didn't, you know, my own personal experience, I was never really, I never allowed myself to get distracted. Um, I've always grew up just doing what was right because, you know, that's just the, the nature I come from. But I would say just, if you if you sit down and, you know, look at the, the 10 most, or the 10 things that you do the most, um, and you go through every single one of them and ask yourself, is this benefiting me? You know, do that and figure out if, if it's not benefiting you, why are you still doing it? Um, if it's if it's not taking care of your family or yourself, then it's not going to be able to take care of the team. So you know, probably cut that out of your life. So analyzing every move about your journey. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Thank you. Do you? Yeah. So Jim keeps talking about this being the team, right? He's like an NBC and probably and all these different things. Is there a moment, like one specific? Um, no, I don't think I have any specific moment. Um, I mean, like after it's like after Zinter getting hurt. I mean, oh, I, like that's that's like a like an in-game moment. How about like a? But I mean, maybe that maybe that is it, right? Yeah. When I was asking, that sort of stands out to me, but I'm not. I don't see everything. Yeah. Experience or all. Probably uh. Either uh, right after we found out Coach Harbaugh wasn't going to be there for Penn State is one of the key moments just to see how everybody responded um, within that, you know, next five hours of hearing the news. Um, and then, of course, the next day to see how we went out and played. But um, How did you respond? Like, 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 now that it's a little more removed, how, how pissed were you? Uh, I, I think, I don't know if we were pissed or if it was more like, all right, like, you know, this is what they want to do. Like, let's go out and prove them wrong. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you take our coach away from us at one of the most pivotal times of our um, season. Okay, cool. Like, we have we have an answer for that. And that was just, you know, go out and dominate. And then you, were, you told me about, uh, like, that fight that in high school when your mom's like, that part that, like, had everyone say, do you remember what year that was? That was, uh... 2010 Dorchester Eagles. Okay. So, okay, so it wasn't in high school. No, no, no. This is Pop Warner. Okay, it was Pop Warner. Yeah. 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 Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Mike, throughout the course of the season, you know, sometimes it's blank scoring three or four touchdowns. Colston's had a multi touchdown game. JJ's running in, throwing it in. As a defensive guy, if you're at Bama, what's the scouting report look like for this year? Very good run game. Um, you know, don't fall asleep in the pass game because at any moment they could go against, you know, they could have a play action pass. Um, you know, try to contain JJ. Don't let him extend plays with his feet. Um, good arm, very accurate passer. Receivers who will make the make the catches you give them. Um, you know, contest the definitely make sure you contest the catches. Um, tight end group that's very talented. So, you know, our our offense, you know. It definitely gives them a lot of things to worry about, I feel. So, you know, it's going to be a good good matchup. I wonder if you could go back to when you were going through the, the decision to switch positions. Was that something that you pitched? Was it Coach Harbaugh? Was it like, how, did, how did that come about? Coach Harbaugh called me going into spring ball and said, you know, Mikey, I want you to play defense. You know, I didn't really hesitate or think about it. The next day I was in the film room. Yeah, so Coach Brown recruited me to play, not not to play defense, but he was part of my recruiting process, Coach Brown and Coach McElwain. And when I got here, he uh, Coach Harbaugh said, you can play offensive defense. I'm leaving it up to you to decide. So, I, you know, I chose offense. I wanted to play receiver. And then it wasn't until the end of uh, 2021 where he actually said, you know, let's make a switch.
Um, yeah, you know, Coach Harbaugh, I'm not sure if he said it in the media, but, you know, him saying, you know, the worm has turned. Um, I'm, I think you probably heard him say that before. Yeah. So many. yeah. Um, just, you know, it's what we've been working for. It's, um, it's what everyone's been having their mindset on is, you know, turning the narrative of this program. And it's not like we've been, other than the 2-4 and four season, it's not like we were ever had a season where we had a losing record. We've still been a solid, you know, it's been solid years. It's just you look at the history of this program, it's not what it's been. So to finally be able to get it back to, you know, the standard of what Michigan is, it's, it feels good to be a part of the process. You talked about how the preparation is different. That's what you said the other day in Ann Arbor. But now that you're here, what is different about playing in Rose for the third and second year of the college football? Um, just the history of the game itself. Um, you know, Desmond Howard was saying this the other night that, you know, you, you go to Michigan, you have the game, Ohio State. Um, but the feeling of the game, I haven't been able to feel it yet because of it's not, you know, it's not Monday yet, you know what I mean? But, you know, he was just saying that, like, the amount of emotion that you feel before playing the actual game itself is unmatched. Like, and, you know, the rivalry of Ohio State is – probably the most you know it's the biggest rivalry in college football in my opinion and it's you know for him to tell us that if you multiply that emotion that feeling by a hundred it's like no there's no way you know way you're being real like there's nothing that could be bigger than that game so you know I'm, I'm waiting to I'm a very emotionally stable person so I'm waiting to see what that actually feels like come Monday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely feel like we kind of took our foot off the gas a little bit going into that TCU game because, you know, we we had a narrative that Big Ten football isn't what um, – what are they, Pac-12? Or TCU? TCU. Big no, 12. Big 12, Big 12. Um, see, I don't even know my conferences. But um, we had a narrative that, you know, Big Ten football is a lot more physical, a lot more whatever than uh, Big 12. But, you know, that's not the case. Like, football is football at the end of the day. And when it comes to the playoffs, every team is as good as each other. Um, or you have teams that are faster, that are whatever, than each other. Like, if you're a good football team, if you're a good football player, you're going to show up when these in these big games. And, you know, TCU did exactly that. They took advantage of the mistakes we made. Um, and we, were never, we weren't able to come back, you know, get ourselves in a position to win that game. Just talking about how special it is to come back from Yeah, definitely know that young guys, some of them don't know what losing feels like. Um, and, you know, to be a guy, a part of this team that came from a 2-4 season, it's like this didn't happen overnight. Like, you know, this started somewhere. Um, and so for you guys to be a part of this, one, take advantage of it, but don't let it go back to what it was. You know, keep keep this program and what this program is right now. And, um, you know, leave leave something, leave a legacy for the guys that come in after you to follow and, you know, surpass at some point. Speed, um, you know, they got a, a very fast receivers, a very fast quarterback. Um, they have a good running back room, and then their own line is very stout up front. So, you know, they have a great offense, um, but, you know, to be a part of the number one defense, um, we know that we have a good challenge, a great challenge on our hands, great opportunity. So, you know, I can't wait. It's going to be a very fun game outcome Monday.